Good evening, esteemed educators, and welcome to our virtual professional learning experience where we will explore how we can foster global citizenship and cultural awareness in our early primary learners. We just wanna thank you for all that you do every day on the ground with our most impressionable and vulnerable minds. We like to call you guys our root waterers because what starts at the roots sustains learning for a lifetime. And especially when it comes to a topic like that, let's start it from the very beginning. So who am I? I am Mallory Mbalia, and I am an educator. I will forever be a Kinder Star teacher, but I currently serve as an elementary assistant principal in Raleigh, North Carolina at Underwood Elementary School. And I am also a PBS Digital Innovator All-Star. Um, but we cannot go any further before I introduce my dazzling co-host, Ms. Elizabeth Boswick. What's up, Elizabeth? Hello, Mallory, and greetings to everybody here tonight. I'm Elizabeth Bostwick, educator and um, digital innovator all-star and also an author. And I'm just so honored to be here with all of you tonight and really excited to discuss Let's Go Luna in the Classroom. Thanks so much, Elizabeth. We are really excited for this topic. And we are so thrilled to be joined tonight by Joe Murray, the creator and executive producer of Let's Go Luna, and Eric Messel, who serves as the educational consultant for Let's Go Luna, Let's Go. So Joe Murray is an award-winning artist, animator, and book author. He is the creator and executive producer behind the new upcoming PBS series, Let's Go Luna, through Nine Story Media set for release in fall 2018. But guess what, y'all? It's already out, and my girls love it. <laughs> Joe Murray is also known for his groundbreaking 1990s Nickelodeon series, Rocco's Mind, for which he recently completed an hour special rebooting the series for a new legion of fans. Hailing from San Jose, California, Murray is also the creator and producer of the highly rated Camp Laszlo, which aired on Cartoon Network. With a combined experience of creating, directing, writing, producing over a hundred hours of television. Oh, his work has gathered him two primetime Emmy Awards, as well as a host of international awards. He also is an award-winning independent Sundance, Annecy, Ottawa, and other prestigious festivals. Um, I'm, yeah, words, there we go. Murray <laughs> resides in Southern California with his wife and four children where he runs Joe Murray Studios. And he has two adorable little boys which also inspire his work every day. And let us go on to Mr. Eric Messel. Eric Messel is an educational consultant with extensive training in cultural anthropology, y'all. <laughs> Experience in ethnographic field work and a master's of education in multicultural education. He is an educational consultant for Let's Go Luna, and he's gonna drop some knowledge today. Welcome, <laughs> gentlemen, how are you? Thank you, it's Good, great, thank you. great to be here. I also wanna to add to my uh, resume that I'm married to a school teacher, and I have the highest respect for the job. I know everything that goes on behind the scenes. I know all your secrets. So I know how difficult it is, and I, and I know what a fantastic job that you guys have. I left uh, 15 years in the classroom to come work on this show, so I know exactly uh, what teaching is all about, what a wonderful thing it is that everybody does. Yeah, and I need to say I respect teachers since I'm sitting next to you. <laughs> yeah. to take me out anytime. Well, thank you so much to both of you for joining us, Joe and Eric. Today, our learning objective is to explore how we can support the development of global citizenship and cultural awareness in our early primary students. Throughout the conversation, I will be inviting the audience to participate through asking and responding to questions. We will also be helping to integrate the questions you submit through the chat box on the side of your into this conversation. We'll be keeping an eye on the chat box and are happy to help answer technical questions you may have along the way. So before we get started, we wanted to offer some quick tips to help you participate in the event today. As you can see on your screen, there are several interactive tools you can use throughout the discussion, including the emojis below. <laughs> and 
all of the other different chat box features. On the side of the screen, you'll see our chat box, which allows you to introduce yourself and your class and post a comment and submit questions to Joe and Eric. Throughout the event, we'll be integrating questions you submit into our conversation. So please share your questions on this topic. You can test out the bo chat box now by telling us, where is everybody from? Shout out your location. All right, and this event is going to take place over the course of the next hour. If you encounter any technical issues at all, please reach out to ov at itvs.org. We'll post that email address in the chat box. For the best viewing experience, we recommend that you connect your computer to a hardwired internet connection and use the Chrome browser. If you have any issues viewing, try refreshing your screen. It's okay if you're on Wi-Fi, but you may experience some, experience some delays during our film clips. Okay, so I'm gonna go check out where everybody is from. We have people from Hawaii, the Big Island, Peru, Virgin Islands, Argentina, China, Chicago, Kansas, Kentucky, Puerto Rico, wow. We are ready to dive in and get started. And again, welcome. Man, we really are all around the world. <laughs> um, so we are gonna explore in a phenomenal platform tonight, friends. It is the Watch, Play, Explore, and Share platform. And it is a way to integrate technology into your classroom in a seamless and really interactive way. Through the Watch, Play, Explore, and Share platform, students have the opportunity to have media embedded into their lessons in a way that is clearly connected to the content that you're teaching in the classroom. Through play, integrated play and literacy, outdoor exploration, songs, music, and of course that little bit of media, students will have multiple opportunities to connect to content and make it relevant for them. So with the Watch, Play, Explore, and Share, we can start with the watch. And the watch is when we can take um, a targeted PBS video to spark curiosity and engage thinking within the focus of the learning objective. And fortunately, PBS offers full episodes and short clips to really zero in on concepts to explore and learn about. All you have to do is select what fits the needs of your unique students to tailor the learning experience. So we all know the power of play, right, Root Waters? Play is so purposeful and impactful. It provides students the opportunities to engage with learning objective in a hands-on way and utilize their natural curiosity, creating authentic connection to content. When we dive into exploration, we can take a deeper dive into the learning objective in a hands-on way that fosters curiosity and understanding with our little learners. It's a great opportunity to explore alongside children while also leveraging the power of inquiry to encourage children to ask questions and just make connections to their learning. And through SHARE, they provide students the opportunity to share the learning that they have made throughout this whole experience with your family. Because when kids can talk about it, we know they've really connected to it and really understand and took something away from that learning experience. So, we're going to now get ready to introduce Let's Go Luna with Joe Murray. Now that we've gone over the basic idea of watch, play, explore, and share model, we are going to take a deep dive into what this could look like in your classroom. Today, Joe will introduce Let's Go Luna to us prior to watching a clip to make a connection to the important messages embedded in the show. Joe will now share by introducing a fun clip from Let's Go Luna, where we will learn more about hot chocolate. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Yeah. Um, we, we decided for our first city to explore was Mexico City and uh, wanted to find something that connected with, with every viewer. And that was the love of chocolate. I know I love chocolate. Um, so we were able to take the story of where Coco came from and weave it into somebody's search for the uh, for their mother to to bring back her beloved Coco bean. So that I believe this is what the what the clip is. Okay, so um, before the video starts, we're going to be seeing a loading wheel before and after the video plays. 
So just please give us a moment as we play the video and then connect back. You will also see the, the phrase on your computer that the moderator has paused the video. Just disregard this message and um, enjoy the clip from Let's Go Luna. Loco for Coco. That was great, Leo, but all this cheering is making my belly burble. Me too, Andy. I could go for something yummy. Hi, Leo. Hi, Andy. Hi, Hi Carmen. Want some Mexican hot chocolate I made? Sure. I love chocolate. Mmm, cinnamony. That's the way we make hot chocolate here where I grew up. My hometown of Mexico City, which happens to be where we are today. Right, Magic Globe? That's right, Carmen. We are in Mexico City, the capital of the country of Mexico. And I see you're enjoying hot chocolate. Did you know chocolate came from Mexico? Wow, really? Mexico City is a very old city with wonderful music and delicious foods. And chocolate. <laughs> yes, Leo. In Mexico, most people speak the language of Spanish. The way you say hello in Spanish is by saying, hola. <laughs> hola. Hola. Let's go out and explore Mexico City. OK, Leo. Let me put Honey back in her cage. But. Huh. What's that sound? Hola! Whoa! Can you teach me to do that? I'm afraid not, friend. Only armadillos could do that. Have you guys seen my friend Garmin around here? Sure. She's just over there putting away her hamster. Who's that armadillo? Armadillo? Pico! Hola, Carmen. Leo, Andy, this is my good friend, Pico. Hola, Pico. How are you, amigo? Amigo is how you say friend in Spanish. Actually, Carmen, I'm not so good. My mother left our cocoa bean farm to deliver beans to all of Mexico City, but she forgot to take something very important. As she was leaving, she dropped this. Whoa! What's that? It's a cocoa bean. My mother says this bean is so important to all of Mexico. I've got to get it to her. A bean? How could one bean be so important to Mexico? The cocoa bean is what is used to make chocolate, Andy. Like the hot chocolate we had today. Chocolate? My bean! Mm, that does not taste like chocolate. <laughs> Not by itself, Andy. The cocoa bean is grown on trees here in Mexico and is sweetened with sugar to make chocolate. I need to return this cocoa bean to my mom. Her first stop on our bean delivery is Choco's Chocolate Shop, but I'm not sure where that is. Well, we'll just have to go find it. Okay, and welcome back, everyone. Now that we've had a chance to get a glimpse into Let's Go Luna, we're going to hear from Joe Murray as he shares a little bit more on the character of Luna. Well, I wanted to, to just introduce the show in general. Also, um, if, if you're not familiar with it, we have a show where we have three kids who travel around the world uh, with their parents who work at a circus. And every new city that they go to, uh, Luna the Moon comes down and, and they explore a certain aspect of that city or culture, uh, hang out with the people there, eat some of the food, listen to the music, and... Uh, and get an overall feel for, for these different areas of the world. Uh, Luna herself is kind of like a big sister who hangs out with them. She's very cool and very, uh, very physical. She has trouble squeezing through doors and she falls a lot, but, uh, but she's, she knows everybody and everybody knows her. So she's a lot of fun to be around and always handy to have if you're traveling. I would love to have her while I was traveling. And yeah, she dances. And yeah, she dances. She has a very, uh, she gets crazy legs when she hears music. She has to dance. Uh, that is just so brilliant because just in that one piece of having the moon be that character that takes kids around the world, we're automatically connected because we can all see the moon. So snaps to you guys. That was very brilliant. <laughs> um, but the first question we have for you is, what do you hope to cultivate in children through the show Let's Go Luna? My main goal was to just introduce the fact that there are other people who are different and very similar to you around the world. 
I think there's something, uh, especially within American audiences uh, at this age group, that maybe have not experienced anything beyond their block or or, or where grandma lives. And, and I think for them to really get the spirit of a, of a global community, knowing that we all fit in together, that if anybody comes into their classroom from another country, they know about that country. They know, uh, they know that there's there's a different part of the world that maybe they haven't experienced, but they can start the conversation about it. And that's really that was really, you know, each each episode has its takeaway, is what we call it, curriculum wise. Um, that we would like our audience to come away with. But if anything they come away with is just being able to start the conversation that there, like I said, that there are other kids out there, there other people who live out there, they may seem different, but they're very similar to the way we are. We all eat breakfast, but maybe we eat something different for breakfast. Absolutely, absolutely. So just like that, you've already kind of touched in on how we can help zero, kids zero in on these concepts. It has to be in a natural and authentic way, that it's not something foreign, like, oh, today we're going to learn da 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 da, but in, oh, wow, I can make that connection. They eat breakfast here and then I eat breakfast there. I think it's through those natural connections to just seeing them, children in different parts of the world, where they can make those connections that, hey, Absolutely, it might look a little different, but we have so much in common. And I think with this show, you do it in such a nice and authentic way that kids will be learning tolerance without even realizing that's what they're doing. Thank you, yeah, and I, and I'm, I have to give credit to my school teacher wife who, who teaches quite often with story and now the, and the importance of story and how we can, we can better engage within a, a, a student. Um, to, to put a, uh, these ideas across. We have also an idea of immersion where sometimes they may not even realize that they, they are immersed into this world and something is coming from that. Just, just they may not be able to say afterwards, but they've, they've known it, they've felt it. And that's how we learn culture ourselves is just exposure and immersion. And that's how enculturation takes place. So if we can expose uh, are these young learners to uh, the world on a greater scale, they'll have that um, going forward in their lives. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing. That's, and that's the beauty of it. I have to say the, the biggest things about teaching global awareness is I believe when it's totally just embedded, it becomes that authentic learning experience. So one thing I always tell my fellow educators is, you know, we have to teach these literacy concepts and these ABCs and one, two, threes anyway. Why not use a book that has a character that comes from a different country or from a different continent? And so that it's authentic learning. It's not something segregated or different. Like today, it's time for global awareness. But it's, it's embedded into the content itself. And I think that for kids, that makes it just so real and connected. And they can start to build that seeing how beautiful that the differences are in the world and how we are connected through our differences and that our unique, that we have our uniquities are what make the world such a beautiful place. Right. But, all and right, so Elizabeth, can moving you on. Share, Joe, will you share <laughs> with us what gave you the idea for the show? Um, it was actually uh, after doing shows on network television, I really had a, an urge to do something with PBS. I, I was, um, concerned about the commercials that are shown to our kids quite often. And, and I like the commercial free aspect of it. And I also like the fact of contributing on a learning level um, with, with what I do best, which I feel is it's telling animated stories and creating characters. So I spoke with PBS. They had a, an opening for a social studies type curriculum. Oh, they gave me a few different types of curriculums that they were looking for. And I jumped on this one because I have a total interest in it. I, I love travel. I, I love learning about other cultures. It was something that I'm personally uh, passionate about. So I jumped on it. And, um, and then I started feeling like if I were a, uh, a child going into a new city or a new country, uh, would I feel comfortable? Would I feel, you know, uh, part of and not so different and so i started thinking i wanted to have another character that came in and knew everybody and knew everything uh, about that country knew the language knew the food knew the you know it's 
And uh, I had done a children's book before that had the, the moon in it. So I kind of had that already in my mind about, you know, uh, the character of the moon. And, uh, and I thought she would be a great asset. Everybody knows the moon. Everybody has that in common. And, uh, you know, she's been around. So that's really where it came from. And then, I, you know, I, I developed it from there. And, and uh, you know, PBS has been very supportive the whole way. With, with the whole concept. Beautiful. And what suggestions do you have for initiating conversations about those different cultures? And Eric and Joe, you could chime both in on this. Oh, great. Um, yeah, when initiating conversations uh, about different cultures, mm -hmm. obviously you want to start those conversations around something, around a lived experience. So something that our, our, our children and our students can relate to. Um, something that's in their lives. We, you know, we want to make that uh, their beginning point close to their lived experience so that they have somewhere to draw from. Um, and classrooms present plenty of opportunities to do that, whether, like you said before, we introduce literature or we talk about, you know, uh, we have a new student in our room. And uh, how do we begin talking about that? Luna is a great way to start that. I think the fact, too, that we... We integrate food and music and art within all three of the characters have these various interests. And, and I think on, on a, in this age group, music and art and food are very important. And, and those are things that you, you, can, you can find a common ground in. And for them to say, oh, I, I listen to music, but this is what they listen to. And we can even talk about what instruments do they use. And, and we have a food episode in Paris where they make a grilled cheese sandwich, which all kids love, but maybe they make it a different way. Maybe they use a different type of cheese. Maybe they use a different type of bread. So it's it's starting with something relatable and, and, and finding that common ground is where we try to go with all of our stories and, and then exploring it in, within a new city and, and a new culture. So the cocoa bean episode, um, that's a great place to start. You know, what are your favorite sweets? You know, go around the room or what, you know, what do you like to eat that, uh, that's sweet? And then we learn from, we eat chocolate. Well, where did chocolate come from? Well, it comes from this place and the magic globe shows on a map where Mexico is and we go into Mexico City and we learn something about Mex uh, Mexican history and, and the history of the area and where all of this, where it's something we enjoy in our lives on a daily basis, where it came from. I like how you're talking about the relevancy and bringing in the food and the music, things that kids can really connect because I think when they make those connections, that's when they become open-minded to embracing one another. And it really reminds me of when I taught second grade myself, we did a holidays around the world. And so while we explored different cultures um, uh, that were that are all out there, but we also discuss the cultures of the students in our class and they had to learn about their heritage and their ancestors. Um, but then they had the opportunity with their family to create a recipe to bring, I think that bringing the food piece together, it helps kids to really connect with different cultures. So I love that idea. Yeah, I had to say, you know, you get, <laughs> you get a lot of love and connection over the table, over, over the, um, the dining room table. And, a food is an essential need that everybody needs all around the world. And I, and you mentioned the magic globe. It made me think about when I was teaching my kinder stars and how we definitely had a map up in our classroom to try to tie that global aspect into our classroom. So whenever we read anything from a different country or whenever we ate something from somewhere or whatever we did in the classroom, we would take a sticker and put the kinder stars are going around the world and map where we went on our magic globe. And it really brought the my classroom to life in a way that they felt like they were world travelers because they are. And we do have a lot of ways to connect to our whole world right in our classrooms and in our cafeteria. Because if you think about some of the food that comes through that cafeteria line, a lot of those origins are from different places in the world. And you can start having those authentic conversations right then and there. Authentic learning. <laughs> and having the map and globe in class is a great idea because, you know, with your taste buds, you're tasting it sensory, you're in that moment. Then you can have a macro perspective and kind of get, you know, look at the map and say, well, where in the world, you know, we get a new spatial look at where this is from. We get that greater sense 
of, of what we're all a part of. Yeah. And yes. speaking of going all around the world, oh, go ahead, Elizabeth. Oh, nope, that's okay. <laughs> go right ahead. Oh, no. We had some questions coming um, from our wonderful people who are joining us tonight about where will you go in the world? Which continents are you going to touch on? And where else in the US are we going to be going to? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, from, you mean within, from here on out, with, from what you've seen already, we're, uh, we're going, uh, I think we're hitting almost every continent. We hit every we, continent. We even hit, even hit Antarctica. We even hit Antarctica. Because <laughs> we have <laughs> the Christmas special, um, which is coming out very soon. Uh, they, they accidentally <laughs> get lodged into uh, Antarctica and worry about whether Santa's going to come, but they also learn that everybody's got these different gift givers, and and we, so we find out about how Christmas is celebrated around the world. But um, every continent, we 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 have our own maps that we say, are we making sure that we represent this this area and this area and this area? Yeah. Um, we definitely within the next episodes are coming in um, that we we are uh, focusing on some smaller cities rather than hitting the big ones we kind of said well we're going out on a world tour where are we going to go and eric we, you know we 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 talked to eric about if as a as a teacher as uh an anthropologist how, how would you what would you like to expose a, a child to first and so that becomes the beginning of the discussion about wherever we go so as far as your question about america so we go to juno alaska and we hang we hang out with the Tlingit uh, natives in in uh, Juneau, and then we also go to New Orleans, which is proving to be kind of the the symbolic uh, city of American melting pot that uh, is is encompassing so many different cultures and influences that we're able to touch on from the music to the food to the artwork and the architecture, and uh, so we're able to really showcase how how we are all part of everywhere in the world and in, in how we live in the United States. In the next uh, group, we're going to Boston, I believe. Well, we haven't, these are, these are, yeah, these, the, the cities for, <laughs> these, they're still up in the, these are in conversation yeah, about yeah, yeah. where we would like to go. Yeah. So Boston uh, was a, was, was one reckon was one possibility. Yeah. So there's a couple more within the United States, but we're trying to, to really find symbolically and culturally, uh, areas of you know, the great importance to us. Well, and to go along with that, what guidance do you get from each country that you visit? So we start out, um, you know, we, we look at a, a possible destination, a city, um, and, and I have a, you know, curricular guideline that, that I look at with history, anthropology, uh, economics, geology, um, geography. We, we look at a bunch of different possibilities that we could, we could touch upon for takeaways. And then we go do research on that. And at that point, we reach out to um, advisors. So I meet with academic advisors at local universities who are specialists in this particular area um, that we're visiting. And they make recommendations. And we tell them, you know, we've got three characters and one, um, one loves food. Uh, one is a musician. The other is an artist. What, what takeaways would you recommend that we could teach about from this uh, city, from this culture, from this country that... Uh, would work within those their their passions, and so we can you know get a big list of possible takeaways, and from that our writers sit down with that list and they start to you know pitching ideas for stories, and that's kind of how that process begins. Later, you know, when we have the stories written, we go back to these advisors and we you know we go through the stories with them and and ask them questions uh, you know about how we're presenting it. You know, is it accurate? Is it appropriate for our audience? Is it respectful? Um, to the culture, to our host culture. And so that's part of the process that we go through. And we have a questionnaire for them with all kinds of, of what should we include? You know, what would you recommend for our anthropomorphic animals? Um, what words mm -hmm. local language <coughs> we talk, could we, you know, introduce, so. And every detail is, everybody on the staff, this Eric, Eric does most of it, but we all do research. Yep. Uh, the writers themselves have to do research when they're, when they're fleshing out a story. Uh, the background designers and painters are researching what it, what the street looks like in Barcelona, or Mexico, or wherever we're going. Um, what is the, you know, and and the food and and whatever we're doing is all carefully uh, 
uh, researched by everybody involved and the storyboard artists to yeah, do an amazing job and and also you know i was just we were just doing a show where we we're in india and it shows a nighttime shot in india and i'm working with my sound guy and saying what does it sound like in india at night you know we need to find out what that sounds like and and the monkeys there are certain types of monkeys we can't just have any monkeys in there right it, so. chimpanzee sounds won't work when it's a rhesus monkey or <laughs> A, a certain kind of parrot flying across the screen, but it's making a songbird sound. I go, you know, Joe will say, hey, what kind of sound does this parrot actually make? Or, you know, and, and we do research to that level of detail. So to the best of our ability, we're, we're trying to really paint an accurate picture. And also the accuracy comes from, and we find this from our advisors or when we're just doing research, is that there are a lot of stereotypes out there about different countries that we tend to, you know, the, that common knowledge sometimes tends to you know lean back on which is not true there's there's a lot of things that we can talk about that that are are just what everybody thinks is the, the case for, for a particular country or or culture and and the advisors work with us closely to say how is this how are we respected in this in this and how are we presented like this and so we we pay particular attention to that and that's Phenomenal. It is. And, and last time when we had an early learners webinar, we talked about the concept of having a wonder wall in the classroom. And that really fits so many different topics. But even when you're working with um, cultures and whether it be different religions that kids may be having in the classroom, but having that wonder wall where kids can post their wonderings um, pertaining to this, again, because you're clarifying a lot of misconceptions that kids may have through bringing everything together. Um, with the show, but I think that Wonderwall is a great area where kids can express what they're curious about or what makes them think a little bit more deeply on the topic. Right. Yes. And, there yes, and kids will post anything. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm saying there's there are certain things that, you know, if our if our day <laughs> started a conversation, you know, maybe we do start with something that we kind of uh, have, have hear or have heard about and say, this is what we've heard about this country. This is, but you know, if we want to just start that as a conversation and say, this interests me, well, okay, that's great that it interests you, but maybe we want to paint some more accuracies for you and, and really let you get to know exactly what it is about, you know, that makes this country so great or this city. Yes. And, and you guys do a really, Glad you're touching on some of those stereotypes and those misconceptions. And we have a couple of different questions coming in. And but one thing that I really am appreciative of is some, especially some of the countries you're going to in Africa, because Africa in particular is a continent which gets generalized as a country and not not a not a continent. Um, and so the fact that you're going to, I know there's a couple places you're going. Where in, exactly in Africa are you going? Cairo. <laughs> Cairo. Um, Nairobi, Kenya. Nairobi, Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the books, on the list coming, uh, moving forward is Accra, Ghana. But that's still- Beautiful. Yeah. 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 And then we're, we're going to- Beautiful. As yeah, well. yeah, oh, uh, uh, Johannesburg. Yeah. That's wonderful. I, I think that's a perspective that is such a, as all the continents are, such a vast, a vast continent that has such a variety of people and faces and cultures and music, much more than I think can often be the perception. And also touching on that, there was a question about, do you guys talk about Native Americans in yeah, the show ever? As uh, Joe just mentioned. And now you talked about the indigenous, yeah. And, and uh, yeah. Clingit uh, <laughs> and Juno, Alaska. Yeah. I mean, we were, uh, it was yeah. really important for me to, to try and, and work that into the first run of, of the shows. And and so we we kicked around different areas that, that you know, would work best. And so I chose Juno. And, um, and the Alaskan, you know, we work very closely with the Alaskan community there, with the native uh, Tlingit community, and uh, we 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 present totem poles, uh, we 
Appreciate Story storytelling, time. which is, they're all turned out to be fantastic episodes with, with uh, you know, the roots of, of our country. And, and I would love to do more of that. And we're working on, I mean, even in um, uh, our episode in New Orleans where we're, we're, we explore the, the cultural influences that went into New Orleans, um, the, the local tribal influences are, will be mentioned, you know, will, will be part of that episode. It will be um, talked about. And we're curious too, how do you pick which place you'll go next with the characters? Well, like we talked about earlier, we, we, we sit down, Eric, Eric puts out a place, you know, places that he thinks are of interest around the world. We just did it for the second season. Uh, we had a, a, a group discussion. Um, everybody puts in their, their recommendations about where we'd like to go and what we'd like to do. And, uh, and then we just, you know, make our choices. It's, you know, it's it's always a, a a point of whittling it down to to a certain amount because we'd like to go everywhere, right? And, and if uh, God willing, we we get enough episodes, maybe we'll do, we yeah. can. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, as we looked at the next one, we went through the map and looked at where we had already been, and we picked those areas. Okay, well, where where are some areas that we haven't yet, uh, you know, spent some time? And so, for in those areas, we went and looked at the various cities and got input from. Uh, you know, people who, who who know about that region well and took that into consideration and put together a list, to, you know, with multiple possibilities in each area that we wanted to explore, and then brought that to the entire group. All right. Um, there was a question about how you guys address um, different religions in the episodes and different holidays i know you have the um holiday special coming up but how you dress i guess some different religions in the episodes um, <laughs> immersively is a good answer um we really were trying to uh, delve into these areas and as difficult as sometimes it is to avoid uh conversation about religion and politics and right. that's kind of like our area of of trying to uh, maintain a certain level ground that that uh, that is, you know, where we can really explore more of the people and the areas and the history and and, and try and, and not get into those conversations, which I think a lot of them are better for the parents and the kids to have. Um, you know, trying to figure out our place as as how we are in presenting and and. Uh, so those are the choices that we made. And, and you know, the, the idea is, is that we are going to a place where we are learning things that can be anchor points that will be references for future conversations because those conversations about religion and politics are necessary conversations and they're great conversations to have. But in the context of this show, we were looking uh, to do something else and maybe be a building block in that direction. I mean, we have certain references, like we have a, we're in Cairo and Carmen makes friends with a young girl and she's got a hijab, the headscarf on. And so we have, you know, some, some elements of certain religions that end up, you know, coming into the story, but we don't point, uh, you know, in right. anything to it and say it's anything different. It's just who we are. You know, they ice skate in front of St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow. But we don't go into the history of the, you know, the structure itself or or what it represents necessarily. And we're in Rio de Janeiro. We have Christ the Redeemer mm -hmm. uh, on the mountaintop, and you know, it, it's elements that of of religion that that is is embedded into these cultures. We just we just don't don't follow up on that. Just use them in context. Right. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so out to our panel, um, we have a couple of, of things we want to pose to you. How do you all promote culture classrooms? And why is teaching cultural awareness so important in our, for our young learners in their classrooms? Uh, 
I think too, it'd be fun to go into sharing some of the games that are connected with um, Let's Go Luna to show how kids can incorporate play and then kind of come back to going over the importance of teaching that cultural awareness as we discuss some of those. Perfect. Uh, when you're talking about games, you're talking about the digital. They're talking about the panel, they're, they're uh, teachers. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to our, our effect, um, PBS Kids Online Games are available to our students. And there is a great game connected to Let's Go Luna called Chef Leo's Crazy Kitchen, which you guys can see on your screen demoing right now. Um, so this game we were talking about the importance of food and how food connects us. And one of the great ways of bringing kids together is over through making recipes and connecting that way. And honestly, I will say, if the kids make it, they were more likely to try it. <laughs> so in this game, kids have the opportunity to make recipes from around the world. I think the one they're doing right now is mole chicken. Yes. And bringing back that chocolate aspect. Mm -hmm. Who knew that chocolate could be savory? Yeah. <laughs> it can. It's delicious. <laughs> and beyond even just doing the play with the media, which is a great way to play, encourage your ways with this play aspect of the Watch, Play, Explore, and Share. Maybe they're playing show or making from a country from around the world. Thing that is played in a different world that they might be able to connect to something that they do right here in the States. I mean, even something as little as playing football, pretty much everywhere else, but here at soccer, <laughs> is a great way to bring in that global connectedness in a way that is playful and fun. And I know you Root Waters are masterful center creators. So create those playful centers and let them rotate through and play with their learning and connect in an authentic way. Yes, and those centers are great with musical instruments, games, and everything else. And, and after people, whenever we um, can engage with play with our students, then we can go into some deeper exploration too. And we can explore it through creating recipes with each other, um, just as shared a little bit earlier. And there are some recipe cards from Let's Go Luna, as well as um, postcards. So kids can explore by sharing postcards too, which is a great way to be able to go and explore a little bit more. Yes, and that aspect, Elizabeth, I know we both agree, bring in a book yeah. to dive a little deeper too. Yeah. And bring in that literacy connection. Yeah, the reading a book, we talked about also, um, going back to what Joe and Eric were recommending, but maps taking the maps out and exploring where the continents are, using the globe. If we can bring in art and artifacts and clothing too from various cultures, it allows kids to really get their hands on the items. And again, the food, when we can provide those experiences for kids to really delve in and have their hands on things, be able to taste different recipes and create with art and music, we really help them to explore cultures and connect more even with their own culture and what they have to share. Beautiful. All right, and going from that to that um, share aspect at the end, sharing out is a really imperative part of this process for kids because, okay, I'm gonna go to a really basic example, but thinking about reading, right? So when students are learning, can read every word on the page, but when you go back and ask them what the story is about, they have no idea. So they really didn't really pull anything from it. So it's really important after you go through a whole unit to go back and give those kids the opportunity to share out so that they can share out what they connected to. And if there's some things that we might wanna steer them to to make the connection that might've gone way far away, we can reel them back in, but also still encourage them in their learning in their own way of exploring that content. Um, so that's the beauty of that watch, play, explore, and share. 
And we want to go back to our panel briefly and just discuss amongst the four of us real briefly why we feel that cultural awareness is so important in the classroom. So who would like to go first? I'll go first. Eric. Yeah. Um, it's important because it, it enhances the quality of our lives moving forward. It really does. It opens up um, new experiences to us. It opens up uh, new relationships. Um, when we are open to everybody that we meet and we are open to the idea that people have different frames of references, different cultural lenses for how they interact with the world. And we engage that and we want to learn from that, from their lens and share our lens and find out, you know, kind of find out how we're, how we're human together on this planet, that helps us moving forward, whether, you know, it's in the classroom, it's on the playground, it's on the street, it's in, you know, future in the workplace. Um, it's going to enhance our experience of the world. It will open up opportunities for our young students when we have that, when we, we embrace cultural awareness in that way. Uh, right. I, go ahead, Joe. No, I, I just, you know, this, I listened, uh, to an NPR uh, story that was specifically about how cultural uh, exposure, multicultural exposure leads to ultimate creativity, which I've, I found to be yeah. very interesting uh, in the way that we approach you know, our art, our music, our, our you know, learning, you know, to learn in, in a creative way. I think it can be enhanced by your exposure to, to other cultures. But I also feel like like America is such a diverse country and it's and it's getting more diverse every day. And so for us to understand who our fellow students are who are sitting next to each other uh, and to to understand where they came from, where their family came from, maybe they you know they're they seem to be talking like like all of us, but maybe their parents don't. And where is that from? And and how does that meld into our community? And how does it create a, a richer community? Because it always does. Yeah, I think the conversations that you can have with students are really instrumental. Um, and just go, looking back at the reflection about how are we similar? How are we unique? What's different about us? And when we start having those conversations and let kids know that it's okay to ask the questions that they have safe trusting and that's when we can really see the growth take place in our kids. And, um, and as you were mentioning too, there is a lot of research that is showing that having that really positive experience with the diverse types of people can strongly influence how children develop perceptions of others in the future. And I think as educators, that's why it's so critical that we're providing the experiences for children and not just like the one time of today is cultural awareness day, but how can we really interweave that language within our daily interactions with students so that it's just a normal point of reference and part of our classroom culture. And I wouldn't be able to definitely walk away with this conversation without dropping, dropping the E word of equity. So cultural awareness is something that is so imperative to instill in our young learners, but not only in our, our young learners, but also in us as educators, because if we're gonna give kids what they need in the classroom, it's imperative to know where they come from and what makes them unique and to know about their families. Because in order to have that true connection with kids in our class, Classroom relationships are so important and authentic really, really drive a classroom. And the best way to have those authentic relationships is to get to know each other and respect each other for who we are, what we walk on and where we come from. And once we know that, we know how to reach each person as an individual and as a collective. It's about giving kids the opportunity to themselves and next to them in the same way for different reasons, but different beautiful reasons, and that we can come together and that we can work together. I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there who say they don't see color, but we do, we all do look different and that's okay. That's a part of who we are. We are all gonna look different and kids do see the differences. 
But we also need to talk about those differences in a way that we're connected and related and in a way that makes it common language. And as everybody's talked, the power you as early childhood educators is the earlier we, the more it becomes a part of their, the more that cultural diversity becomes a part of something to, they're exposed to. It's not somebody different, it's one else. Welcome to our family. That that concept of classroom is so important and so powerful that as we talk about that with our students, we talk about how we're a classroom family because we're connected because we all need the same thing. We all need to feel safe in the classroom. We all need to feel valued in the classroom and we all wanna be seen as individuals. So cultural awareness is something that like Elizabeth has said, and we've all said today, can't be a one and done, can't be, here's our cultural moment. That's embedded throughout the classroom and embedded throughout the classroom culture and something that's talked about openly and honestly. And that creates natural tolerance and natural empathy and equity. And I do want to share a resource <laughs> too, that there is a website and it is geared for kids, for, for classrooms with ages seven to 11. So I know this is pre-K to two, so if we have second grade teachers, but you can also take this resource back and share it with your colleagues too. But Empatico is a great website where you can go in and select lessons that you want to teach your learners that have to do with cultural awareness and global citizenship. And then you can schedule a time um, with another class and it can be in any country in the world. And so as long as you have that common lesson, you go in and schedule and you're matched up with a class. But it's such a phenomenal way to open the door of your classroom and open the walls to your classroom and really connect with students in another country that may be on the other side of the world. So just keep that in your back pocket if you're looking to get into some virtual learning with your students and connecting with classrooms. Beautiful. Okay, we've got time for you, Joe and Eric, and it's a good one. What is your favorite part about working on this show? <laughs> uh, my, like, like I said earlier about uh, actually latching onto this idea for a show, I, in my spare time, I like learning about all these places anyway. So to be able to come to work and learn something new every single day, I don't think a day has gone by where I haven't learned something about about people and how they live and, and a country or their history or today I learned about potatoes in the Andes mountains. I didn't know about, uh, there's just like certain, certain aspects of that. So you can't get any better than that. I, I look forward to work every day. So it's, it's, uh, it's really been a great experience. Yeah. I, same thing. I learn every day I come to work. I learn new things. Um, I love working with the people that I work with. And uh, I think over all of that is the idea that I'm doing good in the world, and that uh, you know what we're what we're producing is 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 a benefit to our society and to the world in a big way. And I think that I think that matters a lot. I totally echo that, and, I, and, there, and seeing that what I what I've uh, done with my other shows and what I'm doing with this show is so different, and it does feel so important. Uh, as, a, as a conversation to be had. And what I'm doing with my talent at this stage of my career, it, it feels like I'm exactly in the right place. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And out to everybody, you will see a link to download your certificate of attendance for tonight um, in the chat box. And the password is, you ready? Spark with a capital S, then lowercase, P A R is case sensitive. So make sure you're ready. And let's remain connected and, and share using hashtag PBS teachers. Please post pictures and reflection on blog posts and tag Elizabeth and myself in these wonderful pictures. Stay connected with us. Connect with um, using our, my Twitter handle, which is at M B A. L-I-A-M, Mbalia M, and Elizabeth, which is at Eliza, Elisa, so it's E-L-I-S-A-B-O-S-T-W-I-C-K. Yeah, and that's with my us. Name. We want to stay connected. My name is Elizabeth with an S instead of a Z, part of my heritage. Um, and just to clarify, our, our password 
uh, is actually Luna the Moon. So we had another, the other one was from our last episode. So this one is Luna the Moon, all lowercase letters. So thank you there so you go. much, Joe and Eric, for joining <laughs> us spark. tonight. Yeah, no, not Spark, Luna the Moon. <laughs> so thank you, Joe and Eric, for joining us. It was such an absolute pleasure to speak with both of you. Do you have any final words that you would like to share with our audience? Uh, just thank you. It's it's really been an honor to be part of this. And uh, uh, any anytime you can drop us a line and let us know uh, how we're doing or any suggestions, um, you know, we could probably get get some information through these these uh, connections. So let us know how we're doing. Thank Absolutely. you so much, y'all. You guys yep. are amazing. And thank you to everybody <laughs> today who's tuned in for the first episode or the second episode in this series of Learning with Littles. And we hope that you'll turn into episode three that'll be coming up in the new year to learn about how we can support social emotional learning in the classroom. Yes. Keep watering, root waters. Thank you for all you do. <laughs>